Hey guys, what's up? Um, yeah, so in the past, it took a long time to get anywhere. If you wanted to go to North America from Europe, it took, I think, about two weeks by boat. And you couldn't really, like, take any water with you. The water would last about two or three days. And after that, you couldn't drink it. I guess they would have to do a lot of fishing. They had a lot of pickled stuff, pickled fish, pickled meats, and pickled food that would last a long time. So everything was salty. Everything was like, there wasn't a lot of water. I guess they were drinking a lot of beer instead because beer stays longer. So you're able to like drink beer instead of water. And they, they were drinking rum instead of water also because rum also stayed longer. So they were drinking that. I don't know if that really hydrates you, but that's what they were drinking. Um, they didn't really know how to turn seawater into fresh water, which is something that's really hard to do now. I mean, there's a way to do it. You boil it and you just let it drip back into a separate bowl, but they didn't really know how to do that back then. And um, it took them two weeks to get on a ship. And if there was a, if they didn't really know the weather report, you know, they really didn't know what the weather was going to be like, what the seas were going to be like, you know, so you could be on a ship going to another country. It could take you a month to get to that other country. You could be going, you know, and for that whole month, you're just like floating and you're, um, you're just like floating around in the middle of nowhere. It looks like just seas in all directions. And if there's like a, a storm that could get real dangerous, if there's lightning, if there's a thunderstorm, there's a hurricane, things could get really, really dangerous fast back then so you know f fast forward to now it doesn't take that long to get to the same place what used to take two weeks to a month to get to now we can get to within like five or six hours of a plane flight and it took took a long time for traveling to get to that you know to get that that distance and what i'm looking at now is they've got the trips to mars and they're saying the trips to mars is going to take basically six months to go from Earth to Mars and just in one direction. And you can't always go like any time during the year. You have to wait till a certain time every year where the planets are closest. Otherwise, the planet is really further away and it's hard to get there. It's, it's even It takes even longer than six months. So they have to wait for the planets to be close enough that they take off at a certain time and they're able to, to land at a certain time. And what's amazing is, you know, for a long, long time, we were just like traveling was getting like shorter and shorter and shorter and like a two week trip or or a, a month long of traveling, maybe even two months of traveling can be like um, a six or seven hour flight, 10 or 11 hour flight, depending where you're going, gets you there really, really fast. So I'm thinking, you know, now that they're having the trip to Mars and it's going to take six months, I'm thinking in 100 years, how fast are we going to actually be able to go there? Will we get to like Mars in three hours in the future? And I'm sure, like, I'm, I'm certain that we, we will because it'll just get faster. It'll be the same thing. New technology will come up. They didn't have airplanes. They had ships. Ships were slow. Ships took a long time to get to where they're going. And this is what we have now. We have ships, you know. They, they take us a, they, We have these rockets and they're, they're jet rockets and they take a long time to get to where they're going. So, you know, that's why, you know, right now there's six months to... To get to Mars, but I'm thinking that it's not even going to take a hundred years for everything to become faster. There's an acceleration of technology going on. They're saying that um, artificial intelligence is going to figure out ways of making new machines and new instruments and things to work really, really high tech, which means like it's going to go from people figuring out new inventions and making new inventions to computers actually making new inventions. And that's gonna happen in 10 years, not 100 years. It's gonna, in about 10 years, computers are gonna be making innovations, inventions, thinking on their own and, and figuring out very, very complicated problems. If you merge artificial intelligence, AI, and you merge that with the quantum computer, which is the new, the new generation of computers that's gonna be coming out, quantum computers are way more powerful, they're faster, and AI, can just make itself, can like improve on itself. So when you have an AI computer, it improves on itself, which means that like, however smart it is now, it actually 24 hours a day, seven days a week, it actually makes itself smarter. It figures out how to 
change its own program to make itself smarter, to make itself better and faster and stuff like that. It's a computer that's going to basically improve itself in an accelerated rate because if something, if a computer can improve itself by 50% over the span of a month, right? Then the, the over span of two months, that computer will be 50% better and then improve itself to 150%. So these computers, and I'm sure like at first when you're starting them, they're probably not gonna work just on their own. They'll probably work in tandem with people and inventions and people innovating stuff, making faster rockets, faster transportation, things like that are gonna be working with AI, with like artificially intelligent computers <clears throat> to have those computers just like make things better. Once computers figure out how to innovate themselves, how to make themselves smarter, then a computer in one year is gonna be way smarter. You know, the computer the next year coming out is gonna be way smarter than the computer a year before. And not because anybody made that computer smarter, that computer made itself smarter. So that's just amazing. And the new, I mean, it, right now we're thinking Mars, wow, it's far away. It's dangerous. You know, we don't, we can't breathe the air. You know, it's like, we don't know what's there. You know, we don't, it's, you know, but back then, you know, to take a ship from Europe to North America or South America, it was the same thing. It's far away. It's dangerous. We don't know how to get there. We don't have, we don't know how to make the food last. We don't know how to make the water last, you know? So just like, you know, we don't know when we get there, we're not going to have any houses to live in. We have to build houses when we get there, right? They're not going to like, they were going to a country that wasn't developed or it was just forests, you know, and the people that lived there lived in tents, right? They didn't live in, in I mean, there were some, some like stone cities and stuff like that, but that was like not common. That was, there, that was like really, that was in the, in, in the past before, uh, Europeans started coming into, into North America, but it's like the same thing. It's like, they were like, they were going to get on a ship that could take a month to get there. They weren't sure if they were even going to go the right way. They weren't sure if there were going to be storms that they were going to be able to get there. You know, it was just a ship. It was, it was like a piece of wood <laughs> that they floats and with some sails to try to hope to like, hope that the stars are going to stay the same so they can navigate themselves to this other country and who actually went? I mean, people that just wanted to explore, right? So people that like in this whole trip to Mars that they're planning, this is the same thing. It's gonna take six months, not like a month, but it doesn't matter because if you look before before the ships and before history, you know, it would take some some traveling. If you had to walk to where you were going, it could take you six months or a year or more to get to wherever you're going. If you're going across Europe, you know, if you're walking across Europe or taking um, horses or, you know, horse and carriages, or that's even slower than a ship to another continent. You know, it may t to, to just walk across Europe, um, it just, it could take months. It could take six months. Uh, there were like bandits. There were wild animals. It was dangerous. They didn't know like how long the food was gonna last. They would have to try to get food on the way. It was amazing because that adventure kind of like stopped for a while, you know? Like that adventure, like it j just recently, it feels like when, when planes were, got really good at what they were doing, people and people started to get to wherever they're going from like between five or six hours to maybe at the most 20 hours or 22 hours, that's like the longest flight, you know, 22 hours and you get to where you're going and you could probably just like sleep on the plane or watch movies on the plane or read or whatever it is and the time passes or do work on your laptop and the time passes and you're there in another country in 22 hours where it would have taken you months to get there. And what's amazing now, all of a sudden that whole well, that whole trip like stopped with the airplane in the 1960s or so, you know, when, when the airplane started getting faster and people could take a plane to other countries and stuff like that. And there hasn't been that long journey since then. And now again, there is this long journey that's gonna happen. You know, now again, people are gonna take that six month journey to go somewhere 
where that's dangerous, that's alien, that's foreign, that they don't know what it's going to be like when they get there, you know, and the people that are going to volunteer for this and want to go and sign up for it are the same people that were, you know, volunteering and signing up for those long journeys in the past. It was the explorers. It was the people that wanted to know, is there more to the world and the universe than what we already see, what, what we have around us? You know, these are the people that did not want to stay in their villages and towns and cities all their life. They, they were asking themselves, is this all there is? Let me see the rest of the world, you know? And we got really comfortable with the world being so accessible, with being able to like go anywhere within like for, for six or seven hours. And the new planes that they're developing at SpaceX, they are going to be able to like take a 10 hour flight and get you there in half an hour. And right now it sounds the same way. Like it sounds dangerous. It sounds risky. It sounds expensive. It sounds like no one's done this before. So we don't know how it's going to go down, you know? So with, 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 with travel, I mean, with being able to get to another country in half an hour to an hour now, we lost that whole, that, that whole adventuring spirit a little bit with these long, long journeys. So now we have, again, this long journey coming up in, uh, ahead of us where, <clears throat> you know, yes, they're going to be traveling six out, you know, six months through space, you know, through space, through nothing. Right. But think of like how the stars will look, you know, every day, you know, think about how like they'll see the earth in the distance, you know, they'll see Mars like getting closer. They might see um, asteroids and there might see things that we didn't know were there. They will discover things, not just on Mars, but in the space traveling between Earth and Mars, they're gonna discover things that we didn't know that were there. That's definite. They're gonna vlog their, their journey. And this is something that's amazing now because the explorers of the past couldn't vlog their journey. You know, they, they might write down their, their diary and their journals and, and what happened and the events. They might've taken photographs of things and stuff, but we're talking about vlogging their journey, like basically like, you know, recording the what's going on, what's happening on their cell phone, and then, you know, sending the signal to Earth so people on their computers can like log in and watch the space flight in action, right? The the spaceship is gonna is gonna be a luxurious ship. It's not gonna be the old, you know, um sea ships of the past with like no water and, you know, like you can, you know, pickled fish to eat, you know, like it's going to have restaurants. It's going to have a people working there. It's going to have pilots. It's going to have a crew it's got restaurants. It's going to have like sporting areas. It's going to have people where people can relax, where they can exercise, where they can sleep. You know, it's going to be like a really, really comfortable flight. They're making this as, as luxurious and comfortable and advanced as they can. And, when they get to Mars, it's just like they're going to have to build a city out of nothing. So they have to get people that know how to build stuff on that plane or on that ship also. So it just feels amazing that we thought that like, yeah, traveling now is convenient. It's not as risky. It's pretty safe. You know, we're thinking like, yeah, we can get to where we're going in a few hours and it's fast and we can see the world. And, you know, the, the days of like traveling for three months to get to where you're going is, is no longer a thing, but it is now again, you know, tra now it's, it's a thing again, you know, who's going to want to travel for six months, you know, the same people that in the past traveled overseas to get, go to another country with no infrastructure, no cities, you know, no towns, no villages where they would have to like build log cabins out of wood, right? So now they're building, um, they're, they're building, um, things, things out of, I guess, metal and whatever. I, I don't know. Like, I, I don't know if they'll, they'll probably be able to build stuff from materials that they're going to bring there. Thing is with Mars is it's just a bunch of rocks. And unless you're building with rocks, um, I mean, I guess you could mine the rocks there, kind of get, get some metals out of the rocks and, uh, use the rest of the rocks as concrete. But you're going to need to build stuff that's like vacuum sealed so that the environment, so the atmosphere, there's enough oxygen to breathe and the atmosphere doesn't, you know, seep in. So 
they're gonna have to like figure out, they're gonna have to bring with them like plans and ways to build these little space stations that at first where you have to be inside or, you know, space suits where you can walk outside where there's oxygen and protection from the elements like the sun and radiation and uh, all that stuff. So it's interesting that the whole, the whole explore, exploration, the deep exploration, the people that explore by traveling for months and, and, and documenting their journey, this exploration is happening again. It's, it's happening with, um, with, with the trips to Mars. In 10 years, the artificial intelligence computers will make such advancements in technology that this six months trip, that six months trip right now to Mars is gonna get shorter and shorter. Think about it, in the future, I mean, the same trip that took six months before can take now maybe only a few hours or a few days at the most on Earth. So we're starting at six months, but at some time in the future, this trip will maybe take a few hours and we don't even have the technology, but this trip will take only a few hours to get from Earth to Mars they'll figure out how to put an atmosphere on Mars. They'll figure out how to make it oxygen, how to grow plants on the soil. Things will advance and things will move forward. And it's just like, what's just amazing is that like, we thought that we, we kind of mastered traveling where we no longer have to travel for a month to get to where we're going. We could tr get there in a couple of hours, you know? But now we realize with Mars and the trip to Mars that no, there's another destination that's gonna take us six months to get there, you know, and now that long trip has started again, you know, the six month trip, the six month journey, having nothing when you get there, no food, no infrastructure, everything you have to build, all the food you have to grow, you know, all of the, all of the problems you have to solve as they come up. We don't even know what the problems are going to like happen and stuff. But it's going to be amazing because the vlogs and the, the journalism that's going to come from that, everything is going to be documented. And I'm sure people are going to be glued to their internet and their phones to see what is happening day by day in Mars and on the trip to Mars. It's going to be amazing. And, you know, that long trip has started again. But, of course, that long trip after a while will become shorter and shorter. And in the future, we will get to Mars in a few hours Definitely, because just the new, the, the AI is going to develop new spaceships and people are going to develop faster, better technology. And as people start going up there, the business, the economics, people are going to make money from going up there, from mining on the planet, on, on the moon and on Mars. And once, a, once money starts rolling into that thing, it's just money is just going to start, you know, rolling into to, to this whole thing. And uh, once that happens, advances will just happen all the time. So, hey. So that's, you know, that's what I'm thinking about the whole traveling thing and the, the whole, the difference of traveling in the past and now traveling in the present and traveling in the future. So uh, please subscribe to my channel if you like my video and I've got other videos, so check them out. And yeah, please like also, and I will see you guys in another video. Take care. If you want, have any comments, definitely comment in the comment section down below and let me know what you're thinking, and I will answer your comments. Take care, guys. Later.